Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 16 Ultimate Team game with the 7 foot 6 Giants all over the field. We have a team full of them. My opponent has won himself in Larry Fitzgerald, but the rest of his team is quite the sight to see. 99 Tom Brady, 99 Rob Gronkowski, almost climbing the ladder and making a spectacular catch. He's got 99 Marcus Allen in the backfield. Here's Josh Cribbs taking the ball to midfield. So he's got a stack core. It's hard to limit one guy, but he's got to, you know, contain on defense and hopefully make plays. You see right there, we contain Marcus Allen. On second down and eight Brady outside we're not giving him that outside route again he's gonna have to show us something else if he wants to move the chain third down night train lane swats it and that's gonna bring a fourth down he goes for it he's going five wide the ball's in Brady's hands and he finds Rob Gronkowski in the middle of the field even with all these giant players Rob Gronkowski is still eating as he goes to Gronk again of course we have DeMarcus Ware Brian Cushing a ton of these guys Charles Tillman on the outside Malik Jackson inside but as you guys see he's throwing and he's throwing to Gronkowski we know who his favorite target is right now as he takes it to a goal to go situation Brady trying to hit Marcus Allen doesn't get it big third down here trying to hit the end zone we got it covered he's rolling out he's got time pressure and he almost threw an interception to Michael Griffin I felt like we were dead we just didn't get an animation fourth down he is going for it and he throws an interception rather than taking the field goal he felt confident in his offense that he could march down field we took it away which is pure height as we take off with drew Brees right here drew Brees not known to run but look at the seven foot six drew go first down man coverage outside kenny Britt got it and he's all the way for a touchdown out running Wad rod woodson and you guys saw there he easily broke press these giant players are gonna break press most of the time and they're gonna get interceptions like that the mark is where he's already tall enough and he jumps that high it's really not fair you know you gotta think you feel bad for our opponent right now because normally that play works it's just they're so big second down and one trying to go with drew Brees, breaking a tackle trying to get a second big run with drew Brees. didn't get it third down running the ball with steven jackson steven jackson already is just a bowling ball like the running back position and with these height morphs, it makes them even that much more scarier. And this is a very dumb play by our opponent right here. He goes offsides on fourth down. That gives us new life. We accept it and we get a new set of downs. Second down, passing the ball. Drew goes down. Loses a ton. Gilbert Brown inside. Third down, we're running the ball with Steven Jackson. Conservative play call right there. And in the end, going offsides didn't hurt him. Could we end up taking a field goal either way? But still a costly mistake to give us extra plays to try to figure out his defense because that might help us out later in the game as he bombs it downfield for Dree Archer but it's picked off by Dick Lane who's having quite the impact out here trying to hit the streak but Archer not really tall enough to make the aggressive catch and Nitre Lane fast enough to keep up with the campus hero as you guys see second down we throw it to Steven Jackson and he gets the catch but doesn't get the first down two minute warning hits Drew Brees looking for the big play Kenny Britt again constantly targeted in this one but this this time he doesn't come down with it one thing about these huge players is that they don't exactly come down with aggressive catches as much as you may think they do at least on the lob ones maybe you throw a bullet might have a better chance but a lot of times it actually helps the uh, cornerbacks they're able to punch the ball out of these tall receivers because the ball is exposed to where their hands are at least that's the way i feel the way it works and it's, it's not it doesn't work as well so maybe the move might be just making receivers tall and cornerbacks short and mad and like just make a bunch of seven foot receivers as he oh gets gosh. picked off by brian cushing our defense came to play cushing nine train lane michael griffin all these guys making interceptions steven jackson moving the, almost moving to change i should say for a first down 50 seconds left definitely don't want to turn this ball because we have complete control of this game and a chance to get at least a field goal right here third down just as i say that we throw an interception and an ill-advised one to charles woodson and now he has life a chance to make it a one possession game right before half but down he goes i believe that was randy starts me in the qb brady is flustered right now he's gonna call his second time out right here to try to get one more big play a chance to maybe get a field goal third down and 20 just gonna lob it up look at all these giants and michael griffin almost gets his second interception and 
in that situation, it definitely pays off to have someone as big as Michael Griffin to, um, you just stay in the front of the ball and have a better chance to catch him than a normal player, obviously. As you guys see right before halftime, we're just going to take one shot downfield. This is Larry. It's not caught, but it is picked off by Ronnie Lott, who's looking to make it a play. Last play before half. Got to take him to the end zone. Fortunately for him, he gets tackled, and the interception doesn't really mean much. And we get ball coming out of half. So, it would have been nice to have that extra field goal instead of throwing that interception to Woodson. But nonetheless, we have a 10-0 lead. We get ball at half. We just can't make that mistake again that we made before. As you see, I want to throw it to Steven Jackson. I wasn't really too sure I should. I probably should have thrown that ball. And instead, we end up taking an incompletion right there. And we got to get Steven Jackson involved in this game a little bit. We haven't really ran the ball too much. Haven't had too much success. So, we got to establish the run game. Make him respect it. And then, on third down, we take our shot for Larry Fitzgerald with the catch. And Larry! He takes it. Touchdown. Oh, man. That spin move. It felt like gave us an extra speed burst right there. And we're up 17 to goose. I've always mentioned it. It's one thing to be up 17 points in the game. It's a whole different ball Good game burn. when you're up 17 to 0. Because that means your opponent has not figured out your defense. And he starts making questionable decisions like this. Just lobbing it up to his running back. That is not the play you want. With all your weapons like Gronkowski, like Larry Fitzgerald, you don't want to throw it to them. And then you get hit in the backfield. And then you start thinking about the pressure. And then you go for it on four down and super long. He's got good protection. And he finds Rob Gronkowski. Once again, Gronk continuing to be the big threat. We're going to have to take him out of these plays if we want to get one more stop. He's looking for Gronk right here. He doesn't have much. He does have time. And he's able to squeeze it into once again, Rob Gronkowski. That Patriots connection is just cashing in right now. Now he's starting to mix it up with the drag routes. But for us, we're playing a little bit of a conservative defense. With a 17-point lead in the second half, we're guarding the end zone at this point. As long as he doesn't score a touchdown, we're doing our job. And at least we're making him work for these yards, covering the deep balls. He shovel passes it right there and gets a pretty decent gain out of it to the receiver. But he continues to run hard up right here because he knows time is not on his side. Brady got time down field. Gronkowski, actually that's Zach Ertz with the touchdown, the seven foot six. Zach Ertz subbing in and getting his first points of the game. And now for us, just gotta con you don't, you don't want to be too you know cautious, but you don't want to turn the ball over. You just want to control the clock, control the pace of the game. And Steven Jackson is definitely the kind of back to do that as we run a fullback dive with Don Terry Poe get the first down. You see, we're chewing up clock, we're taking our time, we're running the ball with Steven Jackson. Steven Jackson, oh look at him go! Throws everyone down. Beast mode, engaged. Touchdown! What a play by Steven Jackson! Just threw three people down at once. George Iloka got the meanest stiff arm of the year thrown his way. Oh, you hate to be anyone on that Cardinals team. Because really, how do you stop someone that big? I mean, it's just as you see, he throws a jump ball right here to Larry Fitzgerald. And it's just an absolute mess with these big players. It's, it's fun, like I said. Win or lose, you know, you just got to try to have fun with this game. Because it's going to be a little bit fluky. Thankfully for us, um, we have most of the big players. So that's kind of to our advantage. We're able to get more deflections off of plays like that in the fourth quarter. He scored a touchdown last time. So this game is not over yet. We got to stay focused because he's making good reads out the five wide. That was a little bit risky right there to Josh Cribbs to Brian Cribbs pushing but um Cribs ended up getting the catch. As you guys see, trying to cover Gronkowski ourselves. And thankful we do long enough to allow DeMarcus Ware to get his third sack of the game as he finds the Anthony Thomas using that speed to take it to the goal line. Definitely got to score a touchdown. Probably need an onside kick right after as he throws it to Marcus Allen. He continues to run hard up and he's trying to chug those legs, trying to pull his own Steven Jackson play. Second down, Brady trying to lead the pocket. Oh, down he goes. Ball is loose and it's picked up by the man. Who forced the fumble? The seven foot six Michael Griffin definitely making an impact. I mentioned it before in the last time we played, man. It's kind of not fair the fact that we're using this Michael Griffin as a user player. It allows us to impact the game so much more than we already do. Using that strong safety as we pitch it on third down. We get Steven Jackson the first whoop. Steven Jackson with the moves, trying to outrace them all. The 30, the 20, they're in hot pursuit, and they just 
bring him down at the two-yard line. Almost took it 90 plus yards, I believe. Nonetheless, big run allows us to really chew up the clock. I was really trying to score a touchdown right there. Uh, we ended up fullback diving at four yards, which I didn't really expect. And then we got it as he throws it up right there. Trying to get that pick with Michael Griffin. Charles Woodson gets it instead. I believe that's like the fourth or fifth pick he threw in the game. We're going to try to run one more fleet flicker before we end it. Can't we toss it up to Vincent oh, no. Jackson? He falls for the fake, and Jackson gets the catch. And, you know, we're going to be respectful. Our opponent, you know, he played respectful throughout the game, so we are just going to need a ball out and take our 31-7 to victory. To play the game, though, Steven Jackson, oh, get off of me, number 43. Look at this. Three people, none of them can bring him down, and poor Vaughn Miller. You don't bring Steven Jackson down by the legs. That man is way too strong down there, and that concludes the game. Leave a like on this video if you guys enjoyed it. Good game to my opponent. Subscribe for more Man 16 Ultimate Team and all that good stuff, and I will catch you guys next time.